The good news of Jesus Christ says that God expects and provides us to have mountain-moving faith. Receive it today on The Miraculous Life. God bless you and welcome to The Miraculous Life. I'm Steve Hannett and I'm your host today. And today is all about you receiving mountain-moving faith. It's an exciting prospect that when the Son of God, the Alpha, the Omega, the one who knows all things, leaves heaven and comes to the earth on your behalf. You know, the Bible teaches in the letter to the Romans written by the Apostle Paul that God is for us, and if He is for us, who can be against us? No matter where you are, what country you're in, what age you are, what background you may have come from, here's the simple truth. God desires His miraculous power to be working in your life. The reason? He loves you, and He desires for you to glorify His name by showing forth as a witness that miracle power. You know, it's a very powerful thing that Jesus Christ, when he came with that motive to deliver, to heal, to break bondages, came and he said something about a gift. It's about faith. This is what he said. In Mark chapter number 9, verse 23, Jesus said, he said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. I'm going to say that again. Let's think about this. It says, all things are possible to him who believes. I'm going to say it one more time. Jesus, the Alpha, the Omega, the Almighty God, the Holy One of Israel, the one that did not call it robbery to be equal with God, the one who knows all things, is capable of all things, the one who has no sin, says, all things are possible to them that believe. Listen, he says, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Did you catch this? That God is revealing to us how to change everything? Do you see the hope that's in what he says? If you can believe, all things are possible. No, he says it twice. He said, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Believes is at the center of the thing that we need before God. I love that this verse does not talk about if things aren't too bad, too late, too long, too hard. That's not the if. The if has to do with the condition of our heart toward God. And let me encourage every one of you that your yesterday, even if you were doubting God, even if you were wrestling with doubt, even if you were bound with disbelief, unbelief, know that as you're hearing the word of God today, I believe that a breakthrough is going to take place in your heart. God desires this breakthrough. We've prayed for you before this message has gone forth to you. And we believe, and I believe it is possible that you receive a breakthrough in your faith today, even as you're listening. When we preach and have healing conferences, and when we're there, we tell the people, don't wait for us to lay hands on you. Go ahead and get healed right in your seats. And many times God is healing the people and we've not given even the prayer call yet, not even an altar call. I want to encourage you that no matter where you are, you can receive by the preaching of the word of God the faith that you need to overcome. Are you ready? Are you desperate enough? Are you tired of using your own ability? Are you ready to be able to get the breakthrough? Because it's real. It's not fake. It's not just talking. 
It's real. It's a promise of God that when we believe, we receive. Let's look at that in Mark chapter 11. Let's listen to the words of the king again. He says, Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Now again, this is God. He cannot lie. Whatever God says is already working. Whatever God says is already established. Whatever God utters from His mouth is literally life pouring out for you. And what does He pour out for you? He says, Therefore I say to you, who, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe. Believe what? That you receive them. And you will have them. You see, the receiving the things that you pray is going to be contingent or depend upon if you really believe God. It says that there's a promise here that when you believe, you will receive. When you believe, you will receive. Now I hope you understand that God cannot lie. I hope that you believe God, that He's righteous and that He's pure. He cannot lie. These two verses, Mark 9, verse 23, and Mark 11, verse 24, paint a picture that says, if you can believe, everything is possible for you. And when you're asking God for the things you believe in Mark eleven twenty four, 24, you're going to get them. You're going to see them. But we have to ask this question. If this promise is that great and God can't lie again, why is it that so many people are suffering? The answer is in this verse. It says, if you can believe. It says, believe that you receive them when you pray. You see, these promises or this promise depends on the faith. And a lot of people too quickly say, oh, I have great faith. Oh, I believe God. Oh, I, I do have faith. My faith is strong. But I want to tell you that when Jesus is looking for faith, he is looking for something very specific, very unique that's revealed in the scripture. He's not looking for a general awareness of something. He's not looking for a mental agreement just in the mind. He's looking for something that's deep inside the heart of a man, heart of a woman, the heart of a child. He's looking for something so pure, something so strong, something that actually comes from heaven. He's not looking for our effort, but rather he's looking for that which he gives. Let's go to the book of Hebrews, and we're going to look at chapter 12. And I want you to see what God is looking for. It says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse number 2, it says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Did you catch it? Did you catch it? It says, looking unto Jesus, the author, the finisher of our faith. It means the originator, the creator of our faith. It says here that it is not only the author, but the finisher. This means the perfecter. All right, what's happening is Jesus Christ is sent from heaven to the earth. He's sent to deliver and to bless us. He's sent to be able to break the bonds of sin, of death, of sickness, of disease. While he's on earth, he gives the description, here's the way. Here's how you can do the impossible. If you want to access me, then you need to believe. You need to believe so deeply that there's no doubt. A belief that goes so deep that it overwhelms your mind, overwhelms the enemy, overwhelms the reason of people in the world. But then it goes further to describe that he enables us to believe because he's authoring the very thing that's going to bring the answer to our prayer. He's authoring, he's creating, he's imparting to you and me that which we need in order to do it. I thank God for this. This isn't God saying, well, 
Do your best, hope you can reach it, hope you can get there, hope you're one of the special few that can have faith to move mountains. No, he's literally authoring your faith. Do you know what that means? That you can, that you can achieve that level through the grace of God to believe him for the impossible thing. There is a great shift that can happen in your life right now when you'll realize you'll tap into the supply of heaven. There is a thing called natural faith. That natural faith is the kind of thing that when you get in your car, you believe the brakes will work. Natural faith is when you turn your faucet on, you believe that water will come forth. Natural faith is I have keys and when I put them into my door, I believe that the door will open. But supernatural faith doesn't come from the earth. Supernatural faith doesn't come from us. Supernatural faith comes from Him who is supernatural, Jesus Christ. So many people are struggling to believe. Oh, I'm surrounded by people who doubt sometimes. When we go to healing conferences, when we speak to people on the street, you're surrounded by people who doubt. We're all surrounded by people who doubt. And get this, many of them are in the church. Many of them are there on Sunday morning in prayer meetings. Many of them are there in counseling sessions because they're operating with their own natural faith that cannot attain to the kind of faith that releases the impossible to become possible. Now, why do I say that? Do I judge people? Do I, am I harsh with people? No. I'm merely stating that a small fraction of people on the earth are actually operating with that which God has given to them, imparted to them. There are many people who say, I want to believe God, but they seem to hit a wall. Well, the first thing to receive mountain-moving faith is to receive it. To literally say, God, I trust you enough that you're putting your faith in me. That God, I am born again. I am saved. I am of you. I've been created of you. I'm made to believe you, God. I'm made to worship you, God. I'm made to see the miraculous life come forth in my own situation. The Bible describes that Jesus Christ asks us, listen, commands us, hear this now, expects us to operate with supernatural faith. It is God that's actually looking at us and saying, I actually am calling for my people to believe my word. He says in Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Every word. You see, no one would do that if they didn't believe God. He's expecting it. One of the greatest examples of God expecting us to have this mountain-moving faith is Peter. Not having Bible college, not having Sunday morning services, but he was with Jesus. He was being trained by Jesus. Many of you know this history that during a storm, Jesus comes at night and there's wind and waves and Peter has the faith to say, if it's you, command me to come out upon the water. Jesus said, come. Jesus met Peter's faith. Peter got out of the boat. Peter walked upon water. Why? Because he was looking at Jesus. But when Peter took his eyes off of Jesus, the Bible says immediately he began to sink. Immediately he began to sink. And he cries out to the Lord, Lord, save me. And it's in what Jesus Christ spoke to him that reveals the heart of God. He, he says, where was your faith? He says, oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? What a powerful question. I believe God is asking the same thing today. Why did you doubt? You see, in humanity and in our natural reasoning, we would say, I was just walking on water in a storm with no life preserver, with no boat, and I'm doing the impossible, how could I not doubt? 
How could I not be afraid? Do you see these wind, the, the wind? Do you see the waves? Do you see the circumstances? Here's what Jesus reveals. Here's what I believe. When Jesus said, why did you doubt? You of little faith. Why did he have little faith? Because God is knowing that it's God's empowerment that's enabling Peter to walk on the water. Isn't that awesome? It wasn't Peter, it was God. It wasn't the fact that there was a little bit of waves or strong waves that were enabling. He was walking on water. He was overcoming gravity. And God expected him to do it because it was God who spoke to him that said, come. God didn't say, come and sink. God didn't say, come and fear. God didn't say, come and be timid. God said, come. Come on the water. Come where I am. You see, God expected Peter to walk on that water because it was God who was doing the enabling. Imagine the same thing right now. Wouldn't that be powerful? That God is commanding you to not be afraid, to be of good cheer? That he's commanding you to believe him? The Bible says in Hebrews 11, verse 6, that without faith, it is impossible to please him. But the Lord wants you to please him. And he's expecting you to believe. So what does this mean? Well, if you put everything I've mentioned together now, you've got a God who has a motive to heal you, save you, and, and, and give you that miraculous life because he loves you. You've got a God who tells you how to be able to do the miracles and receive the miracles so that everything you ask him for that you're going to be able to receive it. Then he says that he gives it to you, that he's offering it to you, and then he literally expects us to operate according to that provision. This all spells we should overcome. We can overcome. We shall overcome. Let me take you to another uh, excerpt of Scripture in Matthew chapter 21, when Jesus speaks to his disciples. He says in verse 18, Now in the morning as he returned to the city, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree by the road, he came to it and found nothing on it but leaves. And he said to it, Let no fruit ever grow on you again. Let no fruit grow on you ever again. Immediately the fig tree withered away. And when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, how did the fig tree wither away so soon? You see, the question that the disciples asked was how could this thing happen that doesn't normally happen? How could this fig tree wither? How could that happen? It says, how did the fig tree wither away so soon? Jesus answers their question in verse 21. He says, So Jesus answered and said to them, Surely I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but also if you say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, it will be done. And whatever things you ask in prayer believing, <laughs> there it is again, you will, believe, you will receive. Listen, Jesus was giving them the answer, but look at the text. It says in verse 19, he sees the fig tree, there's nothing on it but leaves, and what does he do? He said to the fig tree, let no fruit grow on you ever again. He said to the fig tree. Then he says, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but also if you say, be removed and cast into the sea, it will be done. Jesus is saying, you saw me speak to a fig tree. You saw me operate with the fig tree. And you saw what I say happen. Then he says, 
I'm going to look, look at this mountain, and he's saying the mountain will move and be picked up into the sea when you speak to it. Why? How could God Almighty speak to mere men and tell them, you can do what I did, but you know what's interesting is that the mountain's bigger than the fig tree. The mountain being picked up and moved into a sea is bigger than the fig tree. I remember Jesus, he said, and you will do even greater works than what he did because he goes to the Father. But listen to what's happening. Why did Jesus speak to the fig tree and why did it produce? He reveals it as he spoke to the disciples. He says, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but also if you say to this mountain, he says, in whatever things you ask in prayer, believing, you will receive. How is it going to work for the disciples? Faith with no doubting. Who has that faith? Have we ever seen that faith? The answer is yes. When Jesus Christ spoke to the fig tree, do you know what he was demonstrating? He was demonstrating faith with no doubting. You see, Jesus Christ was training the disciples to say, you can do what I did and even greater because you are going to operate like me. You're not going to operate like a timid, scared human being. You're going to operate like a child of God. And when that faith that is in Jesus comes and authors and perfects the faith in you, you can speak to the mountain and remove it. Why? Because you've received that which is the Son of God's. In Ephesians chapter 6, it describes God's armor put on the Christian. One of those elements is the shield of faith. Whose faith? Not your faith, not my faith, but God's faith. You can receive the mountain-moving faith by allowing God to author and finish your faith. You can move the mountain. You can do it. You can have a faith that does not doubt because God is telling you to do what he did. What a shift. What a massive shift this is. That sometimes we think, well, that's Jesus. Of course he's going to do it. But we can't do it. Not true. Jesus is telling them that they can do it. Receiving faith, receiving faith to move mountains is about listening and receiving the word of God. I'm going to close with this. That Jesus told them, if you speak to the mountain with faith and no doubting, it will move. But why should they believe that? Because of God's word. And we come to the conclusion of this teaching. If you want faith to move the mountains, the faith that Jesus authors, the faith that Jesus finishes, perfects, you need to receive his word. Did you know that the Bible says in the book of Romans that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God? The mere fact that you're a believer in God, if God said I can move the mountain, then the size of the mountain is irrelevant. He said it. Once he said it, he created it. Once he created it, now I can have it. God has spoken to you. God has spoken to you and to your body and to your life and to the lives of your loved ones. Say yes to him. Receive his word. And as the word of God is going and you receive the word of God, discount everything else. Let it go. I don't care what the mountain is called. I don't care if it's, if it's uh, Mount Fuji or if it's K2 or any, any of them. I don't care how big it is. I care how big the word of God is. 
when you take your eyes off of the circumstances and you put them exclusively on that which God has spoken, His faith will be operating in you because His faith, His Word creates the faith that you need. Now you've got to activate this today. You've got to make a decision. You've got to put your trust in that which God says and discount everything else. Now some people will call you foolish for doing as such. They will say you can't trust the Bible, but those are not the people that are going to move mountains. If you want to be the one to move mountains, then listen to the Word of God and discount everything else. Say, the Word is moving. The Word is mighty. God, you've said it, therefore it is done. And you will see great miracles break out in your life. You will see Matthew chapter 21 come true. You will see Mark 9 come true. And you will see Mark chapter 11 come true. Will you do it? Yes, I believe you will. I'm praying for you. And I believe that is going to break through in your life. Go for it in the name of Jesus Christ for His glory. Hey, God bless. My name is Steve Hannett, and I'm the founder of Every House, the ministry that produces the miraculous light. I'd like today to talk with you about prayerfully becoming a financial partner with our ministry to get the word of God out to the nations. You know, we've got an amazing team that's dedicated to seeing lives change. Many people don't know that when they're becoming a financial partner, that they're literally joining the work with us and literally becoming part of the family to produce fruit in the nations. Now we understand that your tithes belong to your local church, and we encourage you to be faithful to your local congregation. So we also understand that there are offerings that you can invest in ministries like Every House to help support the work that we're doing. Simply go to everyhousenow.org, click the Give button, and you'll be presented with a series of options of how to partner with us. God bless you, and we thank you in advance for your love. We pray you've been blessed by The Miraculous Life and know the Lord Jesus desires His best in your life. The Miraculous Life is a production of Every House, a missions ministry focused on releasing the power of God, establishing strong churches, and developing sound leaders who advance the kingdom of God. Your love gift to Every House is tax deductible in accordance with the law. We believe your tithes belong to your local church and your donations to our ministry are received as offerings for the advancement of the Great Commission.